Hey guys, Chris here. In this video, I'm gonna give you guys my opinion, my review on the Kia EV6 long range rear wheel drive. So in this video, we're gonna find out if this car is any good. And if you're new to the channel, guys, my name is Chris. I have this channel dedicated to testing EVs. I do range tests, charging tests. I drive EVs down to 0% steady charge to see just how far you can go on a full charge battery. And I do videos like this review. So if you like the content, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. And also if you like the Kia EV6, or if you're looking to buy one, please hit that thumbs up button down below. Thank you very much. Before I take you guys out on the road and tell you what the EV6 is like to drive, I just wanna give you guys some numbers, some stats, and some facts about this car. So the EV6 is a mid-size SUV crossover-ish type of fully electric vehicle. So this car is on a dedicated electric platform, an 800 volt architecture that is shared with the Hyundai Ioniq 5. And I say SUV crossover-ish type of vehicle because you don't sit very high in this car and it's not very tall. It's about the same size as that Ioniq 5 or a Mustang Mach-E, but that means it is quite a bit smaller than something like an Audi e-tron or a BMW iX. So it's 4.68 meters long, 1.88 meters wide, and it sits at 1.55 meters tall. The wheelbase though is quite impressive. 2.9 meters means there's a lot of space in this cabin. There's a lot of room between the axles in this car. We're gonna get back to that later on in this video. So this is the long range version or Kia don't call it actually the long range version. They call it the 77.4 kilowatt hour version, but there is a 58 kilowatt hour version that's, I don't know, the standard range. That's why I call it this one the long range because this has the long range. The WLTP rates this car at 528 kilometers of WLTP rated range, but I've done a motorway test with this car. So click the link down below to see how it actually performs in the real world at motorway speeds. It's quite impressive actually. I was impressed by this car. So this can be had in all wheel drive and also this, which is the rear wheel drive version, which gets more range. So it has a single electric motor on the rear axle, 228 horsepower and does zero to hundred kilometers an hour in 7.3 seconds. So it's, you know, just to kind of, you know, uh, run of the mill, nothing impressive about the numbers. But what is impressive is that this is on an 800 volt architecture. So the charging speed of this uh, peaks at like 225 kilowatts, which is very impressive. So this can do something like 10 to 80 percent in about 18 or 19 minutes. This car in its base form starts at 444,000 kroners, about 44,000 euros or $44,000. This being, you know, the active, no, the exclusive version with basically all the equipment. This uh, uh, tops out at 474,000 kroners, so about 47,000 euros or $47,000, which is quite competitively priced for this segment of vehicle. When it comes to the interior of the EV6, it's generally a very nice place to spend time. I mean, materials are quite nice for this class of vehicle. A lot of switch gear feels very good. There are no parts of the interior that feel, you know, obviously cheap, like other EVs in this segment has some faults. So I would say the interior is overall a very nice place to be, though it may be a little bit dark and too black for a lot of people because I don't think there are too many color options. I've only seen this car with a dark interior. Front cabin is spacious enough and it has really nice ergonomics. The rear seat also, you know, that 2.9 meter wheelbase really, you know, gives you a lot of room in the rear seat. So you can see here, I have a lot of knee room here. I'm 178 centimeters tall or about five foot 10 and I'm, I'm fine. But my feet though, this seat is set to my driving position and I'm not sitting particularly low, but I don't have a lot of room for my feet. So that's a bit uh, uncomfortable. So if the driver sat a little bit higher, that would be better. Strange that the seat sits so low to uh, the ground. And also, as you guys can see, if I have to move my feet back like that, um, I, I do have, you know, the, the, there's not too much support underneath uh, for, for my thighs here. Headroom also is, is, is quite good. But if you're above six feet, you may actually struggle here. So this is worse than I, I, I thought it was gonna be. And this car does not have a panoramic sunroof. So with a panoramic sunroof, it might be tight for people a little bit taller here in the rear seat. One of the first things I noticed while you know sitting in the EV6 is that the steering wheel is offset a little bit to the left, about, I don't know, four or five centimeters. It's a bit weird. So. You're, you're, it's not centered. The, the middle of the Kia badge actually hits me on my left nipple. It's weird because this is an EV, packaging should be easy. Maybe they could have moved, you know, the driver's seat a little bit more to the left, closer to the door. I mean, there's still a lot of room here. So 
it, it is a bit weird. So we have to rotate the rotating gear selector. And then every, every time you get into this car, you have to uh, use the paddles behind the steering wheel to uh, set it into eye pedal or one pedal driving if you want. That's a bit annoying that it doesn't, you know, go into one pedal driving, uh, you know, uh, as your last preset, if you did that the last time you drove the car. And also the one pedal driving is not the best calibration I've, 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 I've uh, experienced, you know, the Polestar does it much better. Volvos do it much better in my opinion, because once you have a little bit speed, just that initial last, yeah, last tank centimeters, it just, you know, uh, starts to roll a li little bit more. And several times I find myself have to actually applying the brake, which should not be the case with one pedal driving. Other than that, steering wheel is very, very light. Throttle pedal is very, very light. Uh, brake pedal, I have no issues with the brake pedal at all. It all feels very, very natural. The blending between the electric motors and the actual, uh, you know, uh, physical brake uh, physical brakes is, is, is pretty nice. I mean, driving driving position is is okay. Um, you sit high, which is nice, but the steering wheel is angled a little bit upwards. You know, considering that you're not sitting too high, it, it feels a little, little bit weird. And also, um, I wish there was a little bit more reach in the steering wheel just to get that, you know, extra centimeter or two. I'm, I'm sitting fine. I am though, but these seats may be my biggest complaint about the driving position because I feel like I'm sitting on them and not in them. They're not the most comfortable. You don't have any, you know, adjustable <clears throat> thigh support so for people with longer legs that may be an issue <clears throat> for me it's not an issue at all but other than that everything just falls in place i mean the driver display is, is easy and clear to read out though a little bit busy in my opinion the infotainment system here sits nicely you have the hvac system down here where you can toggle between the radio and the hvac system though i haven't gotten the power the volume knob to actually work when i'm not in the hvac so that's a bit weird and then you have the gear selector here. You have a wireless charging pad right here. You have shortcut button to heat seaters and also a steering wheel heater and the, the cool seats. Everything ergonomically is just really nicely in, in reach here. So I really like, you know, the, the layout of, of this cabin. And also going over that speed bump, this car is stiffer and, you know, more sporty, if you will, than something like the Ionic 5 and maybe even the Mustang Mach-E but it's still very comfortable. I would rather prefer this drive, you know, this um, ride and, and comfort uh, setup to the Ionic 5 because the Ionic 5 just feels a little bit too floaty, a little bit more control would be nice in that car. This isn't necessarily a sporty vehicle, but it just feels, you know, better, um, you know, connected to the road, it just feels more taut. Even here, you know, through where they're building a lot of construction here, bad road, roads, in the middle of this little town it does not feel uncomfortable it actually feels very nice and also forward visibility as you saw i'm not sitting this this seat position is not sat very high but i still have a very clear view of what's going out going on uh, out of the front windscreen windscreen the the front windows are also big the rear window is a little bit you know narrow but still visibility is very good though it's lacking a rear wiper so for some people that may be yeah annoying also wing mirrors i don't know why they have this big housing on them is that for aerodynamics maybe but uh, yeah they they um they look fine cabin noise in general is nice but i remember it being quieter on other set of tires this may be because this is on you know some mid-tier kumo tires instead of you know premium michelins or or continentals strange is not on hankooks i think they've been on hankooks earlier uh these ev6s which are you know premium tires from korea instead of these mid-range uh kumos but you know overall driving experience this this is a nice car to drive i mean it's it's more towards more towards the enthusiast than you know people who just want comfortable transportation it, it's just a nice and pleasurable car to drive and this also with a rear motor 228 horsepower it's it doesn't feel slow it feels quick quick enough and picks picks up pace quite nicely exterior styling also is one of my favorites about this car i know it's a bit controversial with that rear end but i think it looks good especially in this wide i would probably prefer bigger wheels for aesthetics but for range and for uh, you know comfort these 19s 
are, are pretty nice. And also the range, of course, I mean, 528 kilometers, the WLTP rated range at this price point, under 500,000 kroners or under, you know, 50,000 euros in this package. That is impressive, guys. That is impressive. So, you know, compared to something like a Tesla Model Y, which you can only get as a long range, it's going to be a, a bit more expensive and you're going to get a better ride here. You're going to get as sporty of a drive, but you're going to get a much better ride here. You're going to get a much quieter cabin. And, and yeah, in general, it's, uh, I, I prefer this car to something like a Tesla Model Y. I think I prefer to also to the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Do I like it, you know, more than the Mustang Mach-E? Well, hmm, I haven't driven that car in a while or a standard one. I wasn't impressed by the GT version, but there are a few things that annoy me about this car because it's nowhere near perfect. As I said, these seats, not the most comfortable. I get a little bit pain in my bottom after sitting in them for a while and I don't feel they're, they're too supportive and I feel that you sit on them rather than in them. And then you have, you know, do you have to activate that one pedal driving every time you get into the car? And also some of the, the, the controls here on the steering wheel are just a bit annoying. Uh, I, I mean, confusing to, I, I haven't gotten used to them too much. But maybe my biggest gripe about this car is this Meridian sound system, which is the worst upgraded sound system I have ever heard. I mean, this thing, this is bad. It's, it's, it's not good. It has no power. I've said this before about this platformer vehicle. I think the, what's in the high-end Ionic 5? Is that the Bose? Yeah, it's, it's not very impressive. This Meridian being, you know, a top level tier sound system. Last time I had heard a Meridian sound system was in the new Range Rover. I know you can't compare those cars, but it's much worse than the Bose I have in my Taycan. It's much worse than the, the Harman Kardon in the Polestar 2. Yeah, it's not a, good sound system it's weird that they've labeled this meridian because i mean if this was a base sound system i would have been disappointed so yeah so there we go guys that was my review my opinion on the ev6 long range rear wheel drive and i have to say it is a very good car though it has some things that do annoy me the week i've had this car it's those things have annoyed me less and less and they're not you know necessarily a deal breaker but there's something to consider if you're looking to you know, purchase this car. So go out and test drive it, find out if, you know, the issues I have are issues you have. But overall, it's a very impressive package, especially if you don't need that all wheel drive, if you don't, you know, live in a cold climate, or if you don't go to the mountain, if you don't drive in the snow, this is a very appealing package. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.